So Paul, at one point in my training with Master Liang, you know, he had always talked about the two styles, mm -hmm. Xing Yi and Bagua, mm -hmm. and he had he had some of the best teachers, mm -hmm. Zhang Shengfeng, yeah. uh, Wang Shu Jin. Um, he would always say, "Young man, you must learn Xing Yi Bagua." And sometime I'd see him do a little bit of circle mm -hmm. walk or some mm -hmm. elements, and I'd say, "Sir, please teach me." Mm -hmm. And he'd say, "You know, I, I have forgotten too much, mm -hmm. but." He said, I will find you a teacher. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One day I went to class and he said, hey, I found you a teacher. Uh, you got to go to New York. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and my classmate, uh, William Chen, has a Xingyi Bagua teacher. Yeah. And I've arranged for you to have private lessons with mm -hmm. him. And I went down and that's where I met Master B.P. Chan, mm -hmm. my first Xingyi Bagua teacher. Um, one of the first things when I met Master Chan is he said, do you know Paul Gallagher? And I, and I had not met you at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was before the Omega mm -hmm. and uh, before I, you know, I, I had got to, to, to see you. And I said, I haven't. And he said, oh, you should meet him. He's one of my best Bagua students. Mm -hmm. And he paid that compliment. Well, that was very cool. um, and I had four hours with him. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned so many amazing things. He was, he was just this amazing teacher, mm -hmm. you know, and if you're gonna have a, a first experience, he was, he was the best. I really enjoyed learning from him. Mm -hmm. And I know that you had studied with him for a long time, and um, uh, I, I wonder if you would just share a, a story or two, what it was like to learn with that great master. Yes, well, I can tell you the story of the first time I met him. Or, um, as you know, Ken Cohen, our mutual friend, great friend, was, was he was one of the first students in New York, B.B. Chan. And he would often visit me up in Central Mass in Amherst. And so one day he came up all excited about learning Bagua. And I, was, I had read Bob Smith's book. Yes. So I was very excited about Bagua, and he showed me a little. And I asked him if, if he can. I asked Ken, could you show me a few moves? And he did. He was always very gracious and kind. And so over the months, whenever he would visit every few months, he would learn. He would have learned more. He said, could you show me a little more? And I... To me, it was just a very informal sharing. I mean, it wasn't like I was doing profound study, but I wanted something to vary my routine and just do a little circle walking and so on. But after about a year went by, I think I learned the inner palms, quite a few of the outer palms from Ken, sort of roughly, because he wasn't precise teaching. But I said, could I meet, could you introduce me to be Pichon? And he was, Ken was great, as you know. He said, yeah. I'll call Mr. Chan, you can make an appointment to see him, so he did. So I go down to see him to watch a private class, no, not a, a, pub, a, a Bagua class for mm -hmm. people, was very impressed, and when he moved, he moved like a master. I mean, uh -huh. you could tell right away, this guy's got it. Uh -huh. He never liked to be called a master, but I mean, he, he had it. And I'll never forget the first impression I had, which made me want to study with him, is there was one guy doing the moves. He had kind of army fatigue outfit and a hat like Castro used to wear. Uh -huh. His bag was very rough. He was like stiff and then he'd be boom, boom, like he was doing karate. Uh -huh. Very rough. And so I thought, geez, and that guy's, I mean, the other people, they weren't all accurate, but at least you know, they were pretty smooth, this guy, everything. And Chan was sitting at a bench after the class. He would sit on a little bench and say goodbye to the students. So he's sitting there, students are piling out, goodbye, Mr. Chan, thank you. And this guy goes by and stops right in front of him and says, Chan, is this stuff any good? And I'm shocked. Like, that's like a challenge. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, huh. Oh. What's, what's he going to do now? I mean, is he going to get up and demonstrate, or is he going to show the guy? And uh, Chan had not been in the U.S. very long at that time, so he didn't quite get the question, like, uh, is, is this any good? Uh, what, what do you mean? And the guy said, is this any good on the street? And Chan said, well, you know, he couldn't quite get it. Mm. Finally, the guy says, is this any good? Can I use this stuff on the street? And finally, Chan got it. And I'm thinking, I always challenged him three times. I'm thinking, because I had heard stories of William Chen when people would come in and 
do similar things, he just lined them up and bam, blast them through the wall. And I thought, what, what's this John going to do? Is he going to hit him or blast him? John starts laughing and says, oh, if you think like that, you'll be in big trouble. We only learn, we only study to know that our hand is truly our hand. Wow. <laughs> when I heard that, I, this is the guy I got to study with him. Wasn't at all defensive or angry. So I, so I asked if I could come back the next week. And he agreed. So that was 9 o'clock at a.m. on a Sunday. Got there at 9. And of course, then he said, can you show? And I told him I had learned from Ken. And I said, I, I, I don't do it very well. I just kind of did it roughly. I'd like a few points of correction. Because I didn't want to do another four and a half years mm -hmm. weekly going down. And I said, could you just correct a little bit? So he watches me for a couple of minutes. And forget exactly what he said, but basically it was, that's total garbage. If you want to learn from me, you've got to start right at the beginning. I can't, I'm not going to correct that. And so it's going through my head, oh no, I can't, I can't start from the beginning because I started with Sophia and with Leong and here's another guy. And it's all going through my head. He must have looked and known I was confused or wondering. He said, Mr. Paul, many of my students want to go to movies. They want to learn many forms, show for their friends, but they don't do anything right. Do you want to go to the movies, Mr. Paul? <laughs> <laughs> and boom, it hit me, and I, it just came out as a metric child. I would be so honored if you would take me as a student. Mm. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Be, good boy, good boy. Come next week at 9 and we'll get started. So that's how it started. What um, what arts, what practices, uh, what styles did you learn from him? Well, I learned his bagua, and we must have done the inner palms for a year and a half. And I was seeing everybody doing the in and I'm walking, the, and I thought, jeez, how long do I have to do that? And he kept saying, and he would say, if you really know the, if you really have the cultivation of the inner palms, you don't have to learn the outer palms. They'll take care of you. But anyway, finally I learned the outer palms, and then somewhere in there I wanted to learn Taiji ruler, so mm -hmm. learn ruler. And there's a quick little story with that if you have a minute. Um, I think we have a minute. All right. <laughs> I had a friend who, well, it was an article, he wrote an article in one of the Kung Fu magazines about Taiji ruler. And what I didn't know about my friend at the time is he was a Tibetan Buddhist, oh. as well as being in the Tai Chi and Bagua and ruler. So he wrote this article about ruler, and it was very, it was amazing, mystical article about, as you're doing the ruler, the purple light goes out your spine, and then it turns into a golden light, and it fulges out of your cranium, and then all of this different lights and different energies. And I thought, wow, this is amazing stuff. I got to learn that. It's the only exposure I had to ruler. So, so with John, we're just rocking the ruler. And I had probably studied with him for a year. And every now and then I asked him about the colors. And he looked at me like, colors? And he didn't, he didn't say any more, colors? Okay. So finally I said to him, Master John, are you going to teach him about the colors and the purple light and the golden light? Are you going to teach you this? He says, if you practice like that, your mind be very, very confused. All I say is, rock the roller back and forth. <laughs> it was something. But he was great. We used to, now and then he would take me to dinner in Chinatown. And you probably know this, he loved superly hot food. Mm -hmm. So he would order. La la, you know, make it hot. So the dish would come. I would take a little bite. <laughs> Couldn't be. <laughs> he would call the waiter. La la, come here, come here. Bula bula, it's not hot. Make it more hot. The waiter would try to up, bring it back more hot. By now I couldn't even eat it. And then he'd pour hot oil all over it, and then he'd eat it. Yeah, it was amazing. And even the first time I could barely eat it. 
He loved the sakfu. Did you, you learned standing from him too, right? The each one. Yes, because we had to. That was like the basis of everything. Was and he didn't. He, I'm sure he knew the eight. He only taught me four moves, like one, two, three, and four. Um, and then Ken, of course, he knew the holy trinity. Showed me, but typically before class, we 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 do the one and then go back to the dan chan. And everybody had to stand. Quite often, he would if he had extra time. If he had more than an hour for the class, we'd have to stand for 45 minutes, just stand there. And even though I had trained nine years, stand, when you're beginning to stand, and he always said, this is grandma, this is the root of it all, you gotta stand. So one day I went to Leong, and you, you probably can give me some insight about this. So I went to Leong and I thought, if that's the root and the basis, how come Leong never said anything about it? What, what's the deal? So I asked him, is it Mr. Leong? I'm seeing Mr. Chan. He said, standing is like the very basis of cultivation. And I, I wanted to be delicate, and I told him, but I said, you have not taught us about standing. And I forget his exact answer, but it was on the lines of, I tried it once, nobody ever did it, so I, I just forgot it. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, yeah. He had done some simple standing, mm -hmm. and... Um you know, he was a mover. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because he had told me, hold the horse stance, but he never yeah. showed me how. He said, yeah. do standing. Um, he even told me, you know, you must stretch daily. Oh, how mm -hmm. should I stretch, sir? Mm -hmm. And he never, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was great. Like we talked about in another video cast that you did with me. Um, being with people like that is like its own teaching. Just hanging out with them is you're getting a teaching, not the form, but just something. And I, I think that's really very credible. Did you want any other story about Chan, or was there somebody else? How do you feel? How do I feel? You want to talk another, you want to do another Chan story? Um, you want to do the uh, four-hour drive with the flu and you can't make it and he's oh, yelling at you. Well, you, you had published those in your, on your wonderful monthly letters, so that's okay. But there was one thing where, um, and this is kind of an odd story, but you might like it, and if, if you don't, you can do it. So he had come up to Richard Roy's studio in Massachusetts. Yeah, I remember I met you guys there. a weekend. Yep. And we were staying up at uh, the house in Deer Mountain. And so when the whole thing was over, and it's tiring to sponsor the master, you know, and, and he would, he was a night owl like me. But after I picked him up in Springfield at the train station, brought him up to Richard's, then we had dinner, then we went up to Vermont. I was tired, it was like midnight. And all of a sudden he says, uh, you want it? I'm going to show you some application. So what am I going to do? No, I'm going to bed. I'm sleepy. So, of course. And he asked me to punch him. So I did kind of a timid little punch. No, give me a punch. And I'm not really a puncher. I'm not a great expert, but I had done a wedgie style. So I gave him kind of a punch. He dodged a little and he hit me right on the lung lung. And I literally couldn't breathe. So I punched him like... <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't breathe, and he said, oh, "Don't worry, you'll settle down in a minute." And, and it didn't even feel like he hit me that hard, but it was so accurate and just pop hit me right. And then I realized it was lung one because I, I knew the points. But anyway, so the seminar is finished, and he said we would. His family was coming up from New York to Boston to have dinner with him, his wife. I think one of his daughters lived in Boston. But anyway, some family was coming up. So I take him into Boston, Chinatown. And I knew Chinatown pretty well. I knew where the restaurant was, so we parked. And of course, I would walk him to the restaurant. And when we got there, I said, well, thank you so much, Master John, for coming and see you, you know, in, in New York. Or whatever. Oh, no, not New York. Come have dinner. And I said, Master John, it's your family. It's, it's your reunion. It's, it's, it's not me. And so he said, no, no, come on for dinner. 
And so again, I say to Master Chun, I don't quite feel right because your family is coming up for a special celebration with you. And he looks at me and says, you my family now. Mm. And I thought, well, gee, that's kind wow. of a surprise. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So we had a wonderful dinner. And, but he was a great guy, and he would call me when I lived in Vermont. Every now and then I'd get a call at 1 a.m., and I'd usually still be, hello, Mr. Paul, this is Mr. John speaking. You not call me in a long time, <laughs> I feel, oh. <laughs> when the master call, calls you and you haven't paid respects, that felt terrible. But um, he was one of the great, great, I still have a bunch of cards from him I should show you. Well, you know, when I, um, I, I then later studied with his teacher, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Leon Kai Chi, yes. and, and, you know, and it was all very respectful, and, yes. um, you know, I had, moved, I had moved up the ladder or whatever, mm -hmm. however you want to say it, but I have letters from Master Chan where he would ask me, oh, oh now, you, now, you're studying, now you're studying with my teacher, we're yes. classmates. Oh, wonderful. Um, it was absolutely, he was very egoless. Yeah, he, I don't he know was. if you remember this, but it was at that seminar because um, you were one of my early teachers on the Tao of Love and semen retention, and I'm sitting there with you and, and Master Chan, and I thought, I, he's one of the few teachers I didn't really ask him. Mm -hmm. And I said, Master Chan, what do you think about semen retention mm -hmm. and you know, uh, cultivating the Jing and all that? And he looked at me, and I, I don't know, I was maybe 20, 21. <laughs> but he looked at me and he said, it's like everything else. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. And if you overuse it, you'll lose it. Oh, that's very wise. Oh. Yeah. Just a quick anecdote. But Ken, as you know, is a great scholar of lineages and all. And I don't quite equal Ken, but I'm, I'm just interested in that. And when we had first met John, he would, as you know, he would never tell you anything about his lineage. He says, you need the names of all masters or you want to learn my art. So, and we would kind of compete, Ken and I. Oh, I found a little hint, and, and I was once in the Asian part of the UMass library, the big library in Amherst, they have the nations, and I found this book with pictures of Chinese temples. So I just, and I remember the words, well, there was a Taoist temple under Guan, and supposedly, John had studied there, had a relation with it, but his first teacher was a Shaolin guy, mm. and I remember him mentioning some Buddhist temple, and I can't remember the name of it now, but it was a Buddhist temple, because Se is Buddhist temple, Guan is Chinese, and, but I found it, and at that time I remembered it, and I'm looking like, wow, this is it, this is what John studied, so I made a Xerox copy and all this. And I'm so excited, I go down to the class and I said, Mr. Go uh, Mr. John, do you know this place? And he, oh yeah, yeah, I've been there. And so then I'm, I'm a young kid still, I'm very excited. Well, did you praise all the sutras? Did you, were you there chanting? And he said, why would I be chanting? Buddha already knows all that stuff. Why, <laughs> why would I need to chant? It was hilarious. <laughs> Well, you know my knack for teachers and, and, mm -hmm. and getting information from them. You know, yeah. I was able to help Ken yeah. do some research about Chan's other Xing Yi Bagua teacher. Oh, great, yes. Um, and I have, that, I have that lineage. Oh, fantastic. Um, because actually, Leon Kai Chi told me, mm -hmm. because Chan had told, Leon Kai Chi said, who did you study with first? Yes. Um, so I actually was able to have that, and I, I'll, yeah. I'll, um, I'll share that with you, not with anybody else. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a good time. Those are good times. We're always, we, we just have such wonderful times reminiscing and, and learning because this formerly young man, but he's still full of Jing and Chi and everything else. <laughs> but um, he's been a great teacher and you really have. You've been a wonderful great teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's been, it's been great. It's been so wonderful, you know, uh, strolling down memory lane. Yeah. And uh, I, learned, I learned a bunch. Every time I talk with you, I get another little piece. And um, uh, it's just, it's been a, a really good way to, uh, for me, it's been a really good way to spend my life studying with these different arts, with the yeah. different teachers. And, um, you know, otherwise I'd have just been a simple truck driver. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
I really thank you for opening all the doors and having patience with me. I know I was a snot-nosed kid bugging you, and um, it was so wonderful always to be at Wuming Valley House, yeah. at Deer Mountain Taoist Academy. Yes. Um, and now here I am at the abode of the Monkey King. Um, and uh, I would definitely like to do another follow-up. So yeah. I'm not going to say, you know, goodbye. I'm just going to say, uh, let's do this again really soon. Okay, that would be a great pleasure. Thank you, Master Haber. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> the Master Paul Gallagher. And, and thank you all, audience, thank really. You all thank you again. As well. um, your attention and your appreciation is, uh, it, it's really, it's gold mm -hmm. to us. So totally thank is. you.